Everything's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> Scared the shit out of me though. Hey guys. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Josie, if you don't know me already. And today we are going to be upgrading my IKEA greenhouse cabinet. So when I say upgrade, I don't mean like anything major, anything drastic. I am planning to put these wire grids in uh, on the back side of the cabinet because they finally arrived. <laughs> and I'm also gonna basically create these little hangers so that I can hang it on the wow that is very symmetrical <laughs> so that i can hang it on the wire grate and so that my plants can hang from the wire grate my door seal finally also arrived so we're gonna finish sealing up the door i have found that without sealing the doors uh it has been pretty good humidity wise it's currently it's at 67 percent humidity and i did already open it this morning it's not too bad so if you were wondering if you need to seal the doors, you probably don't. But because I want even more humidity, <laughs> I'm gonna seal the doors with the door seal and I already paid for it, so might as well use it. If you remember from my last video, I put the uh, deep profile strips here on the tops and on the bottoms and the doors now aren't closing properly. So the only way I can close the doors is if I use this little thing over here because as you can see, the magnet isn't working on its own. So I always have to secure it this way on this side and the same on this side. It just doesn't, the magnets just don't work. So I always have to lock it whenever I want to close it. The point of that is that I'm gonna replace the deep profile at the top and the bottom with this. And hopefully that way the magnets are gonna be working. I mean, again, it's not the end of the world. Like, you know, I can still work with it this way, even though there's like an extra step with opening it and closing it every single time. But I think it would just be, I don't know, more pleasant if I didn't have to lock it every single time. Another thing, that arrived are my cable clips that are all stuck together, as you can see. So I'm gonna use those to secure the light cables to the back of the cabinet because right now, I'm gonna show you right now, they kind of just flop around all over the place. So I'm gonna tidy it up, put my wire grids in, put my door seal in, and yeah, hopefully by the end of today, everything's gonna be beautiful. <laughs> all I have to do is take everything out out, which I'm super looking forward to. So let's do that. <laughs> okay, so to be honest with you, I haven't quite figured out what I want the setup to be. <laughs> and there are two main things, well, one main thing that I struggle with, and that is whether I should put the wire grids in there this way or this way. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like both ways, and I'm gonna tell you a little bit something about it so that you can help me decide, even though I'm gonna decide on my own, because by the time you watch this, I will have already published it and finished it. And you know, you know how it works. <laughs> okay, so. Let me show you. As you can see, the wire grid fits in there perfectly, even on the long side. So if I had it in this way, it would mean that I would have more space over here on the sides to hang plants, but I wouldn't have as much length. And I'm not really sure which one is more important to me because <laughs> I don't know. I just don't know. <laughs> so I think if I did have it this way, I would probably hang it about here so that the plants that would be hanging at the top wouldn't be too close to the grow lights and it would also mean that there would be enough space here for trellised plants but yeah let's check out the other way so oh i can just rest it on there perfect so if i put it in this way like i said it would take away from the uh, space on the sides it would also not make sense to have more uh wire grid here because the plants that would be hanging here would be touching the plants that would be standing here on the shelf. Yeah, so I think it makes sense to put it in wide 
the first way that I showed you. I just don't, I just don't really vibe with the way it looks this way. Let me put you a little bit further away so that we can see the bottom as well. So that's the idea anyway, that I would have one of the wire grids over here, a glass shelf in the middle, and another wire grid over here at the bottom because that would give me enough space for any bigger plants that I might want to put in here. Okay, so now you can hopefully see better. So this is what I think I want to do. Are we happy? I don't know if I'm happy to be honest. Either way, I can always make changes if I feel like I need to later on, so it's not that big of a deal, but I feel like this is what makes the most sense for now anyway, so yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna clean the glass behind, I'm gonna connect the lights, and then I'll talk to you about actually attaching the wire grids. So, I figured out a way to attach the wire grids securely, so I'm gonna show you and tell you a little bit something about it. So this is the setup that I eventually went with. So as you can see, there's about, I don't know, 10 centimeters at the top and about 15 to 20 at the bottom. I'm gonna put the measurements of the exact wire grid that I have and also put a link in the description box to the exact same one. On the one that I used, you can see that the first attachment is uh, on the fourth square down and the second one is on the last square. So the reason I haven't attached it with just one screw is because it was a little bit wobbly and I feel like it's a little bit more secure with the second screw as well. Hello Lilu. <laughs> She's a plant now. As you can see, I put washers here. So I'm gonna give you a close up. I put four washers here on the back and then I put one washer here between the uh, washer, between the other washers for basically for the wire grid. <laughs> that is because the screw head isn't really that big on its own. And I felt like having the washer over there would keep it a little bit more secure. And it definitely is a little bit more secure. So. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the screws and the washers. So if you've seen anyone attaching the uh, SCADI spec board or attaching anything to the back of the cabinet, then by this point you will probably know that the screws that IKEA comes with, IKEA comes with? <laughs> that the screws that the Millsville comes with um, are quite short as you can see and they are not enough to hold both the pegboard or the wire grid and the back of the cabinet together so you need to get longer screws. Unfortunately no one said what type of screws they were anywhere. They didn't say what diameter, what length, what nothing. I know a lot of people used screws that come with the SCADIS pegboard but obviously since I don't have a SCADIS pegboard I don't have these that is hardware. So I went to the hardware store and I basically compared this one with all of the screws that they had. So the screws that I found are four millimeters in diameter and they're 1.6 cent is it centimeters? 16 millimeters. Here's the size comparison. So you can see that the hardware store, this one uh, screw is a lot longer in order to hold everything in place. So since these are four times 16, uh, I also got four millimeter washers. So make sure you get four millimeter washers. Obviously, if you're gonna be attaching this cat spec board, that one's a little bit wider. So you might need screws that are even longer than 16 millimeters, but that I cannot help you with because I do not have a scatter spec board. So you're gonna have to learn that from someone else. <laughs> so now what? <laughs> I guess that's the main part done really. So I attached the cables. They're looking nice and neat. So before I load the cabinet, I'm gonna attach the weather stripping. So let's do that now. <laughs>
weather stripping. I think we're done. I don't know. I don't know. I'll, I'll tell you my thoughts. <laughs> so this is where I used to have the P profile weather stripping. This is what the P, uh, P profile, D profile weather stripping. This is what it looks like. And that was just over here. The problem with that was that the cabinet wouldn't close even though I had holes cut out here. Now it closes perfectly. Um, I put the door seal over here and then I was like, you know what? That's probably not even doing anything. <laughs> And thinking about it now, like, I'm pretty sure there is still space here in between the doors and the cabinet. So does this really have any purpose? Not really, but does it make me feel better that I put it there? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> so yeah, you probably don't have to bother with this one. I do still prefer having this one over here instead of the D profile tape, just because I preferred closing properly over um, not having as much insulation. Then I did something similar here at the bottom. Um, I wasn't sure how to attach this one and it made even less sense than the one up there did, but um, this is how I saw someone else attach it. His name is Such Plants here on YouTube and he made a video about building an IKEA greenhouse cabinet and it was literally like without that video, I don't know where I'd be, okay? I don't know. <laughs> so this is how he attached it. As you can see, the sticky part is down here and then the flabby part is over here and I again cut out holes for the magnets. You could probably get away with uh, not cutting out the holes over here. It's, you know, it closes a little bit better this way when it is cut out. And I think the biggest change with the weather stripping has been this weather stripping on the side of the door. So previously there was a big gap right over here and air could escape through here. But now obviously it's not the case. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like on the inside as well. So we'll get to this. <laughs> so this one runs all the way down here until uh, this little bad boy over here. This is what it looks like. So as you can see, this little part isn't insulated, which is why I added this strip up here and I'm gonna add it uh, down there as well. But uh, I kind of cut around the log here, as you can see, and put it on the side of it. So it's kind of, yeah just giving an extra seal. So next up, I have to make these little hooks. I'm gonna show you how to make the first one and then I'm gonna probably watch a YouTube video or something and make as many of them as I need. I think I need 15 of them, so it's gonna take me a little while. Let me show you how it's done. Welcome to my egg chair. <laughs> this is what the hook looks like. Um, I was inspired by Basie Plants because he hangs uh, his Hoyas in his Millsbo cabinet and I think his grow tent as well. The way that he attaches the wires to the pots is that he actually drills a hole in the pots, I think. I don't really want to do that because I'm lazy. <laughs> so this is kind of a roundabout way of hanging your pots. So I just made this first one to see if it would work. It seems pretty stable. Uh, this is kind of what it looks like. So hopefully it will not drop my plants. The wire that I'm using is this gold. I think it's five millimeters in diameter. I'm gonna put it on the screen just in case because I do not remember. I guess now it's time for me to show you how I made this. I don't really remember anymore but hopefully we can figure it out together. <laughs> so first things first, you kind of straighten out this bad boy. So I'm just gonna start by, you can't see what I'm doing, hang on. So I'm just gonna start by wrapping the wire around the pot loosely at first and then I'm gonna make adjustments as I need later on. You want to make it around the more narrow part of the pot if you can. So wrap it about around the pot as you can see it's you know it it's holding on to it. I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller just in case. So now I'm gonna take these pliers. I don't know what the proper name for these is. I just use these because they were in my IKEA toolbox and they have a little snippy part here in the middle uh, which means that you can not only bend the wire but also snap the wire. So I'm just gonna take this part over here, the end part, and kind of bend it over this way. With this bottom part what I do is I bend it a little bit 
so that it's overlapping with this part over here. And now we just create the actual hook part. So I want to create kind of a 90 degree angle between the circular part of the hoop and the hook. So this is kind of what I like. And then I'm going to create a little loopity loop and I'm just going to snip it off. And there you go. So I'm gonna make some adjustments to it uh, to make it a little bit more to my liking. Yeah, so I'm satisfied with this. You can keep the actual hook uh, as long or as short as you want. Uh, I keep them quite short because that way There we go. I keep them quite short because uh, that way I'm gonna be able to hang more on the wire grid. Obviously, they're not all gonna be the same because hashtag handmade. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just gonna have to deal with that, but I don't really mind to be honest, as long as it's functional and as long as it doesn't drop my plant, I'm gonna be happy. Okay, so I've got my 15 hooks slash hoops um, for the wire grid. So let's put some plants in there. So wire grids are up, plants are hung. Um, as you may have seen, the cabinet is overall a little bit darker now, obviously because I took two of the grow lights out. So some of the plants are gonna be getting a little bit less light. But yeah, overall I am satisfied with my hard work. So anyway, that's gonna be it for this video. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think and yeah. I'll see you here for my next one. Bye!